to be a part of this wonderful church. Let's also give it up for his, not only his other half, his better half, his queen. Come on. Uh, his lovely wife, Lakeisha. I love you. I love you and appreciate you uh, very, very much. It's wonderful wife. Amen. And I'm grateful that God has assigned them uh, to this beautiful community. I haven't, this is my first time here, of course. Uh, he was trying to catch me up on some of the stuff. We, you know, we're trying to catch up from two years or stuff. But anyway, it's all good. He'll tell me everything. So I know God will continue to unveil and whatever God wants to speak. Uh, intentionally got late, didn't call him back. So I, I want to come here and just let God just do what he wanted to do. Amen. Pastors, come on. Come on, my, my folk. Come on, y'all. Come on up. Y'all come on up front. Get over these beautiful pastors, Pastor Eric. It was called him Miss, uh, Pastor Tyrone and the beautiful woman of God. Y'all thank God for them. They're doing also, they're in the Orangeburg area doing a wonderful job for the Lord as well. So y'all are accompanied by some power. Thank God for, for them. Amen. Good friends of ours as well. We're ready for the word. Y'all ready for the word? I want to thank God for my church family that came down. I know some of them are told me they're en route and all that good stuff. But anyway, thank you all of those that uh, will travel with me. And of course, uh, Minister Wall and Minister Wall. Thank you all for driving me here. I love my people. I love my folks. And my folks, come on, Him Church, thank y'all. My beautiful saints, I love y'all. Miss, Miss Lydia and, 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 and Faye, I love y'all. Who else here? Baldwin, my mom, mom Baldwin, thank you. Pop Baldwin, thank you. I love you. All right, so we appreciate you all uh, coming here tonight. Y'all ready for the word? All right, I'm going to pray. Y'all pray that, uh, that God just speaks. And, uh, God has done some amazing things this year. Uh, this year is going to be one of the most prolific years of your lives of blessings. And, um, and we're going to be talking about faith, but I want to, I want to, I want to share everything that God placed on my heart in, in a, in a decent time frame. So I know you all have service tomorrow, so we don't, we don't want to stay here to midnight, but, uh, we want to get you out at a decent time so that you can come back tomorrow night and enjoy the, the remaining of what the man of God will speak tomorrow. But God is, God has done some big things in 2023. Um, we'll pray and I'll get into that and we'll allow God to speak prophetically what's happening in 2023, uh, two, two, two beautiful numbers, 20 and 23. We'll talk a little bit about that. Just hit it because I'm not talking about that, but I want to share that with you so you can be an encourager about what's going to happen this year. You have to, you have to pay attention to everything around you. Say, pay attention. Yeah. So why do I like the colors that I do? Why? What was the age that I am? What does my name mean? Some of you don't even know what your name means. You know what I mean? Like you don't look up your name. Your name is really cool. You know what I'm saying? Like you look up your name. Your name has a, a powerful meaning. You were named that name for a reason. Uh, if you want to find your assignment, you look up your name. You look up your name. It gives you a, a beautiful uh, some description of, of what you're supposed to be doing. And so the devil can't have you on another path that you was never designed to be on because your name doesn't accommodate the prophetic path that he has destined for your life because your name doesn't say that. Amen. Some people don't even know this. Look up your name and your name will just prophetically spell out what you're supposed to be doing. And it'll be like, this is me. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. It gives colors, it gives numbers. I'm not telling you to play the lottery, but I'm just saying it gives colors and numbers and stuff like that. And it's just amazing, right? What God is, is going to do. But I, but I, you know, coming on the grounds of this campus, you can feel the grace and the anointing of God uh, on this ministry. And I know God is going to do some, uh, I mean, some magnificent things here. And so I want to thank the members of this church, those that are uh, following this man of God, those that are following this vision. I personally want to applaud you, amen, for your faithfulness to connect with this great man of God and with this church. Y'all are definitely uh, going places. God's getting ready to, to unleash some amazing things. And I always believed this years ago because God did the same thing for us. He always sends you the heart. He always gives you a bigger barn. Uh, first before he brings the harvest. He never, he never says the harvest and you're looking for a barn, you know, so to speak. So, right? So he, he's giving you this, this beautiful big facility and you have to believe that he's going to fill every square foot of it. Amen? Every inch of it is going to be filled with wonderful hungry people. Clap better than that. People that are hungry for the presence of God. People that are hungry for a move of God. Amen. I believe people are hungry for God. And that's I believe some of the missing elements in there. If it's not that complicated, people. Like tonight, I'm going to teach you about faith. It's not that complicated. I'm sure you've heard lessons on faith. I, I want to be so simple that even a child can get it. It's not that complicated. We have, we have a generation that just, some people just don't love God. They don't, God is not number one in their lives. You know what I mean? And we have to put him, he, he's not going to tolerate to be number three when we're supposed to have him in the number one spot. 
God has to be more important than anything and anybody. Amen. We have to seek after him like we've, like we've lost our minds, literally. And we're not that way. Why signs and wonders and miracles happen in the old church? Because they didn't have all these technical, these technical uh, distractions. You know, I'm not mad with technology. I love all of it. But we have to put it in its proper place. And now we have to do some things intentionally. If you're going to see signs, wonders, I call it swam, signs, wonders, and miracles. If we're going to see the grace of God fall on the church and for, for people to be slain in the spirit and for worship to be going up, like I heard tonight, it's like angels were singing in here. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Right? But watch this, though. The Lord told me, he said, this house have the next what's it. The, you know, that next, that maverick sound, that it sound, that sound for what's next. Y'all have it already. Y'all have it already. Y'all just need to come here and just open up and just worship and record. And just record and let God do what he wants to do. Y'all have it. It's the, the pureness of sound of what God wants to do and penetration of hearts for us to connect back with God. And for us to get into a posture of worship with nothing that matters, not the bills, not the children, not our husband and wives. Just get into a place where you come here and he's that only focus. But yet that sound needs to go out to the world because when you hear what I heard tonight, I'm like, oh, yeah, they, they have it. And, and only God can grace you with it. <laughs> Some want it, but they don't qualify. Their lifestyles and all that stuff matters in the church. Come on, it matters. It matters what we do in the church of the Lord. Amen. You can't live wild and want God to put his hands on you. Can't, you can't live, come on, like, you, like you, you know, a, a sinner and want God's grace on you to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. I want, I, want, I want to be the best version of me before the kingdom so that God can do what he want to do. When I get up to, to do whatever he tells me, I want the grace and the anointing to be so strong to people. That's a true man of God. You know what I'm saying? I want God's evidence over my life that's strong. I'm very serious about my relationship with the Lord. And I know you are too. Amen. Can we pray and get into this? I'm, I'm so excited. Y'all got to say amen. amen. All right, so when I do that, y'all got to shoot that back to me because I'll get stuck and we'll be here for real to 12 o'clock. Y'all be like, Pastor, don't bring that dude back again ever. So, so we don't want to be here. Uh, you know, wanna, we want to be uh, uh, very careful of our time, but we want to maximize our time together. And I really want you to enjoy the experience of what God wants to do uh, through us all tonight. Because, I mean, tonight has already started with the worship. And just y'all praying for the service and the services this week. But y'all have the sound. Y'all have that sound for what's next. And I'm telling you, come in here and just record. Come in here and just do a worship experience and just record and just flow and just go. Because whatever you capture, he wants to use it. It's like that sound needs to get out. I'm like, wow, it's something special. But he did tell me, he said, your, your, your praise and worship team, that your praise and worship team, whoever they comprise of right now, they have, they have it. They have it. They have, they have what, watch this, they have what God is looking for, not what man is looking for. If you give God what he wants, he'll give you what he wants. No, no, no. If you give God what he wants of you, he'll give you what you want of him. That's a, that's a beautiful exchange, right? You give God what he wants, he give you what you want. And I'm telling you, y'all have that, mm, y'all have it here. And I thank God that that sound will resound throughout this community and draw, come on, the unsaved. It'll draw the wayward. It'll draw, come on, the lame. It'll draw broken marriages. It'll draw lost teenagers and those that don't know their purpose. Come on now. It'll draw folk that are hungry for God, that are tired of just religion, but want a relationship with him. That sound, as you begin to worship here, will begin to escape the four walls and just get to the ears of those that are seeking. I drove by and God told me to come. I heard something. I heard a sound. God told me at the beginning of the top of the year, confirmed with Dr. Bays as well, that there would be angels, that we would hear the winds of, this, of, of, the, of the universe, the wind like wind, because it was windy in Monk's Horner today. And I just had to kind of, you know, and the Lord said, he had to remind me what was going on. He said that uh, when you hear the wind, it's just not the wind as we know, but it's also the, the sound of angel wings coming so fastly to the earth to give the people of God the things that they need. It's like it's been a, since 2020, COVID, was, COVID actually came to, to shut the church down, to actually to, to, to take the church out. And I believe there's things that have been backed up in your life since 2020. I'm talking about 2020 blessing that you didn't get because there's such a focus on COVID and everybody kind of staying safe. 
but the angels are so backed up with blessings coming to the earth that it sounds like even the, 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 the nature is being disturbed with the with wind, this unnecessary wind, but it's not wind as we supposed to destroy. It's the sounds of angel wings. It's angelic presence coming to the earth so fast, and, this, and the natural wind is being disturbed to get the blessings of the people of God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the blessings with your name on it, assigned to you and your family. That's coming to you, unstoppable. Who's going to stop them? Come on. Yeah, who's going to stop them? They're on assignment for the kingdom to get you your stuff. See, God's not going to be made a liar. God's not going to be made a liar that he didn't, he didn't hear you, that he didn't come through for your family. And so I'm telling you, 2023 is a special year because the number 20, come on, say number 20. The number 20 means success. It means, it means, it means success. And also the number 23 means God is with us. It's Emmanuel. It's that Psalms 23 version. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's that Psalms 23. You can read that and know that God is uh, all to, to claim this year to be with us. He's going to be with us. Emmanuel. That's what it means. Emmanuel. 23 means Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God is with us. You will not be denied. Let us pray. Come on, lift your hands. Father, thank you so very much for all that's happened already, all that is moving in this place. <clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this, your wonderful church, this church family. And Father, I've come here in obedience to this man of God. I came here, Father, in obedience to you as well, to come to share, to give inspiration, to give encouragement. And Father, just to let them know that, God, this is going to be a, a wonderful year. This is going to be a powerful year. They're going to use their faith. Their faith has already drawn things into the kingdom. It's already drawn things into their personal life. And I want to show them the simplicity of this, Father, so it will not, not be complicated by the enemy, will not be even complicated by their own minds. But thank you for this time that you've given us to assemble around the words of truth, the words of life. I thank you, Father, that the interest of your words gives life and light and understanding to the simple. Now we lean to Holy Spirit, who is our great teacher and our great God. It's his responsibility to lead and guide us into all the truth. I thank you, Father God, that, that this word again will just be special tonight for those that will hear it. I thank you, Father, that, that not only we hear the word, sir, but we're great applicators and doers of the living word of God. Take us to heights and take us to advanced levels of faith tonight by hearing this word and allow us, Father God, to obtain the blessings. Now, Father, we thank you that Satan is bound from the service and from the minds of your people. He's not welcome on campus. He's not welcome anywhere on these 10 acres. I thank you, Father God, that you're surrounding this place with fire, a fire line, that nothing of the enemy can penetrate it, can get to it, nothing can disturb it, nothing can distract us, that we're all your people, all for your kingdom, all to do what you called us to do. Now, Father, I thank you in advance for what you shall do and what you shall accomplish tonight. Again, we seal this thing from satanic presence, for sin, satanic even injections, satanic gestures. We bind it in Jesus' name. Let this place be ruled and run by the Holy Ghost and by the presence of Almighty God at all times. This campus is gracefully uh, anointed and is gracefully appointed for such a time as this to do all the kingdom business that needs to get done. But we give you praise, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the glory. For it is in the matchless, majestic, and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I need about three happy people to shout amen. Amen, amen and amen. Come on, you can uh, high-five your neighbor. Well, not give them a literal, but I mean, you know, we're doing air high fives at the church. So if you want to high five and bless God, you may be seated. You may be seated. Thank God my daughter's here. Y'all give it up for Divinity Taylor. She was Miss South Carolina, uh, homecoming queen. Come on, that's my, my daughter. Stand up, Vinny. Let everybody see you. That's my beautiful daughter. She goes to state. She needs to be over here. Praise God. Amen. Uh -huh. Y'all have Wednesday night Bible study? She's home Sunday, but you have Wednesday night? Okay, Benny, you got a place, praise God. So that's your uncle. You know your uncle, praise God. I should have did four years up here already, get ready to come, get ready to graduate. So, <clears throat> and that's something. She's already wrapping up this year. So y'all pray for her, amen. She's done well to start school at 16 and uh, 21 now, get ready to graduate. Could have graduated last year, but they messed her classes. So we ain't going to talk about that. So we ain't going to even deal with that right now. So, so anyway, I'm grateful for my daughters. I, I um, have three of them, and I love all of them. And uh, y'all just pray for them. I got grandbabies on the way and all kind of stuff. You know, um, G, not grandpa, I'm G dat. <laughs> G dat, D-A-T, granddaddy Taylor, show for granddaddy Taylor. 
I don't want them to call me that. Just call me G that. <laughs> so, so I'm getting used to this grandpa stuff. So anyway, but God bless the, the grandparents and all you wonderful people that are experiencing that. But anyway, we're excited to be here tonight. And I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about extreme faith. Let, let me share something with you. We live in a time right now where, uh, you know, the world is kind of going wild. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> the world is the world is wilding out uh, very, very badly. And uh, and so with us as believers, our situation requires just some, it, it requires more than normal. Uh, we have to do more than what we've been doing. We have to do, uh, we have to get on some some real, uh, you know, uh, matter of fact, this this year, uh, Pastor, we, we have declared the Lord gave him prayer. This year for us in, in, in Him Church, uh, He declared this year for if 2023 is if uh, the term if and it's actually abbreviation for I and, and the F, but it's intentional focus. That's what He gave us for this year for for the 2023 year. He said this will be an intentional focus 2023, and then <clears throat> He was dealing with me about you all tonight just for this conference sake. You know, it's like uh, intentional faith. It's going to take intentional faith to pull off what we need to pull off. It's going to take you intentionally doing this. And I want to give you some, like, simple terms on this stuff that's going to bless you. But, I, but I'm telling you, I want to come out the gate with it, but I'm going to give it to you in less than probably five minutes. And I understood this thing like I've never understood it, studying again. Like, Lord, what do you want me to say to this man and woman of God and uh, uh, the man and woman of God and, of course, the house to bless them? But uh, connected to that thought, uh, we live in an hour where we can detect that there's, there's not normal activity uh, of yesteryear. The world once we once lived in has changed. How many agree with that? Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. If I'm not if I'm not connected, don't say anything. But if I am, say amen. amen. All right, just give me that, and I'm gonna keep flowing. All right. So the world we once lived in has changed. We can see uh, the community we live in. We can see on the television. We can hear it on the radio. We can see it in the actions of people's lives. Little children don't shoot marbles anymore. How many remember the marbles days? I'm telling my age right now. I mean, come on, some of my folk that's kind of up there with me a little bit. You might be over four or five. Uh, how many know marbles used to be a popular thing back in the days? Some of, what is marbles? Oh, yeah, it was a popular thing, right, uh, Pastor Arrow? All right, cat eyes. You remember the cat eyes? Oh, those are the best kind, right? So, so little children don't, don't shoot marbles and, 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 and anymore. They shoot meth. You, you feel me? That's how extreme things have gone from marbles to meth. And little boys don't play with G.I. Joe figure dolls, of course. Uh, they, they, they play with guns, and little girls don't play with dolls anymore. They, they're having babies. Amen. You got it? And that's not, that's not, a, that's not, a, not a throwing nobody under the bus. And my mom had me at 16, so I'm not throwing young people under the bus. I'm grateful that she had me, amen? But at the same time, you know, you, you see where, where, where there's a great, there, there's something has changed in our society. We have to, we have to, we have to, uh, uh, to agree with that and look at it and call it what it is. But boy, let me tell you something else. There are some folk that's rising up like yourselves. The churches like him church, church like this church, and churches around the universe that God is putting his hands on. That's going to cause a move of God to come on this earth, y'all. I wish y'all would have shouted right there. Yeah, I mean, there, there are some people that are just sick, like, you know, we're not sick and tired. We're healed and tired. Praise God. The believer should never be sick and tired. The believer should be healed and tired. We're healed and tired of just this, 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 sarah, sarah, whatever will be. No, we're tired of the devil punking our, punking our communities, killing our babies. Come on, killing our young folk, you know, going wild and doing everything to marriages. Come on now. We're tired of him running through our school systems, all the shooting and killing and hatred and all this stuff is, is gone too far. And if anybody's going to stop it in the earth, it's going to have to be the body of Christ. Because we have more power than we give ourselves. Come on now. We have more power than we, than we allow ourselves to recognize because the devil has us so distracted with other things. Amen? Amen? So we have to understand this now. We have to understand this that, you know, I remember actually when the media, there was a certain time uh, that on television that the television would actually go off. I remember that vaguely. I remember that. And they would show that flag in the night. You know, show, you know come on now. Y'all remember that? And the TV would go off and say, look, take your tail to sleep. We go to bed at the media station. You go to bed. We'll meet you back here at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. And TV would go out and it'd be this black screen. Eee! We call it black screen. It'd be fuzzy. If you're trying to hit channels and nothing going on, that means go to bed. Praise God. <laughs> go to bed. Amen. But now, you know, of course, we have that 
24 hour thing it's like nothing stops anymore got it but see the, the thing is pastor this is the thing that the, the lord began to show me it's like now the television is piping in info around the clock non-stop whatever you want it's around the clock i mean from your cell phones we're going to talk about all that not demonizing cell phones i have one i love myself well i like my cell phone <laughs> and i love it i like my cell phone and um Anyway, uh, I'm sure you like yours too, right? So whether you got Apple or Android Wars and all that good stuff, you know, thank God for technology, right? We ain't mad at nobody, right? But at the same time, we got to understand, we have to, we have to be intentional with this. Mm. We have to be intentional. We're going to talk about that. So whatever you want to, to watch, how much you want to watch, you can clearly see that the enemy of our soul and the enemy of our faith, he's working to take all of God's creation to Hades with him. He's working overtime because he realized his time is up. Right? So he's doing some stuff. He's working. He's not playing, so don't be caught slipping. All right? Don't be caught slipping because he's trying to kill you and drag you, your soul to hell. Really, that's literally like his MO. His, his MO is to kill, steal, and destroy. Period. End, end of the story. Don't play with him. Don't pat a cake with him. Don't have coffee with him. Don't invite him to your house. Don't invite him to your parties. So on and so forth. He's not your friend. All right? So many believers have a lackadaisical mindset concerning spiritual matters. And we really have to shake ourselves. I know you have an anointed teacher here who's going to continue to teach you about the things of the Lord. And that's powerful when you have someone, thank God for great pastors and under shepherds that care about the sheep. Thank God for beautiful pastors that care about their people. Thank God for beautiful pastors that care about their community. Come on, Mike. Let's give God a better hand clap than that. Thank God that we have pastors that really literally care for your soul care about your mind, care about your future, care about where you're going and, you know, your, your whole life, spirit, soul, and body. Amen? And you have that with this man of God. You have that with this man of God. We've been knowing each other for years, I mean, for, for some time. And uh, he, he's been consistent, praise God. Uh, my wife, my wife, he's always talking, he, he was a, he's a worshiper now. He, he is a worshiper. He is a worshiper and uh, loves the Lord. But my wife, she's love to hear you sing, man. I don't know if she ever told you that, but my wife went on to be with the Lord about three years ago, but she's a love uh, when we come and you get into worship, man. She loves just how God would use you, and because uh, uh, she loved worship, you know, she she was a worshiper and uh, and the psalmist and all that. But she loved the new songs and how God would flow through you and stuff like that, man. And this guy does worship. He, you do love the Lord, and I just know that's why God's going to use this house. Come on, as one of the sounds that will come out of here to bless the world. Come on, say it better than that. Come on, say it even better than that. He's going to use this house. As one of the sounds that's going to come out of here to bless the world, y'all have it. Come on, say we have it. Yeah, we have. You already have it. Many blessings that, that we're overdue. That's what I believe this 2023 is, this whole year, this if 2023, intentional focus, intentional faith. This whole year, we're overdue. We're over. We're past due the blessings. Like I said, when you hear to go outside and the wind is blowing and it just sounds unusual, it's, it's the wings of angels moving real swiftly to the earth to get God's people their things. Come on now, they're coming in quickly to bring you your things. And so, so we have to be number one, no more playing with God from this day forward. God has to be the most important person in my life. You got it? He has to be more important than mom, dad, brother, sister, wife, everything. He has to be number uno. He will not take a number two spot. Unfortunately, he doesn't take number three spot. The Bible says, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom, first, and his righteousness, second, and all these things will be added. It is unfortunate we live in a generation where we promote where we promote the things so much and that we chase the things so much that God is not even sought after to be number one, but he will not take the number three spot. We have to understand order, order of importance. He's number one. One means one. One don't mean two. One don't mean five. One don't mean six. One means one. Means one. And you can't make it mean two. You can't make it mean three. You can't make it mean, Lord, you know my heart. No, you, you got something twisted in your mind. He don't understand that kind of language. Because you know what I learned, man of God? Grown people will make happen what they want to make happen. You'll make happen what's important to you. And sometimes God is what we, what, what we call what I've coined as a word. He's not important. He's important, but he's not important. That's spelled H-I-M-P-O-R-T-A-N-T. He's not important to us. See, important the things that are important to him. Important the things that are important to you. Until he becomes important, you're not going to put him number one. And now we live in a generation now where everything is a distraction. Everything's coming to rob, to steal your faith. Because faith only comes one way. We'll, get, we'll deal with that momentarily. You already know how it comes. But everything comes to mess with your ears and to get into your ears and your mind and your heart. 
I have the saying, out of ear, out of heart. So we have the saying you've heard, out of sight, what? Out of mind. But out of ear, out of heart. If it doesn't get in your ear, it's not going to get in your heart. And if it does get in your ear, it will get into your heart for the negative to the positive effect. So no more shucking and jiving, no more, no more casual approach towards the kingdom of God. So we want your faith, amen, to be extreme. We want it to be a, a, an intentional focus on faith, the intentional, fa intentional faith, intentional focus. If you take a close look at the life of Jesus and the patriarchs of old, their faith was causing things to happen, all right, that was going on against the very laws of nature. And, uh, and you cannot govern your life with the same level of commitment from yesterday. I mean, we, we live in an extreme world, a lot of craziness going on. We, 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 we seem to be committed to everything except, uh, uh, committed to everything and everybody else except for the agenda of God. Nothing is regular in, in its advanced formula anymore. You know, you got extra, extra double strength, maximum strength. You don't go to the store and get no regular Tylenol anymore. Regular ain't doing the headache no good no more. <laughs> you that what, extra, extra strength. <laughs> you know, you're dealing with all kinds of stuff, you know. Bills, people on the job, community events, children, grandbabies, like all kinds of stuff. And your headache ain't giving you no normal headache. <laughs> and you don't go in the store looking for, oh, just get some regular Tylenol. You be like, no, give me that extra, extra strength. <laughs> this is what my head needs right about now. And so, therefore, we're, we're trying to obtain our blessings on the average and normal faith. I listen to the word every now and then. I come to church whenever, you know, whenever I get a chance. I pick up my Bible and read it just whenever I get an opportunity. This has to be intentional. I got to wake up knowing God is number uno. If nobody else get no time, right? If nobody else get no time, it's going to be them. God going to get his time. Because how deep really is 30 minutes a day, 25 minutes, 5 minutes? How deep is an hour for somebody that can go longer than 20 to 30 minutes? So God knows your heart, he does. But how deep is just giving him an hour block, 20-minute block, a 20, 30, 40-minute block, 10-minute block, 15-minute, pure just, just, just prayer, meditate on the word? How, how deep is that? Because every, how, how, how deep is that? Because you could be on Facebook and some of y'all green lights stay on way longer than an hour. I'm, I'm coming back over here. We're talking this section over here. I'm coming back. I just, just, just go monitor y'all time. See how long they green light? I don't be on Facebook like that anymore. I learned a valuable lesson. But anyway, I'll tell you about it later. So some of that green light, your, your light be on all day. This is like, I mean, you know, hours. Come on, more than one hour, more than 30 minutes, more than 20 minutes, more than 40 minutes, more than 50 minutes. Got it? You know when people are online because they show the little green light, right? Okay, let me go over here. They don't want to talk to me. Uh-huh. They show the green light? Does it show the green light? Okay, I want to make sure. Now, I'm not going to embarrass you. Does it show the green light when you're on Facebook? Somebody don't know? It doesn't? Okay, you don't know. Okay. You don't know that. Yeah, that's how they know you're online. So y'all learn something tonight? Go online, look at their face, their profile. And if it's green, that means they're online. Oh, you hit them up, say, girl, you online. Don't be lying to me. You ain't here. Come on. Hey, how you doing? Call me. You online. Oh, you online. Or oh, somebody done hijacked or stole your phone. <laughs> you online, sister. Oh, brethren, amen. So now, let's go real quickly. Uh, keep my Bible, uh, man of God. Let's go to Romans 1 and 17 really, really quick. I'm going to show you something really quick. This is going to be good because you just need to get this. Praise God. Come on, say intentional faith. Come on, say it like you mean intentional faith. Say my intentional faith will take an intentional focus. I got to focus on this. I, 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 I'm too hungry. I'm, I'm too desperate for what God wants to do for me. I'm not playing. Come on, I, I'm not, you know, I thought about it. I said, Lord, you know, we always say, oh, man, the, the signs of the, 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 the wonders of yesteryear, the signs and wonders of our forefathers and foremothers, foremothers, they, they had, they didn't have all these distractions, first of all. Uh, and I, and that, that, those were factors, you know what I mean? I called this, I called this and not, again, I'll be referring to our phones. I call this the world at your fingertips. You can do anything with this phone. It's amazing what you can do, what you tap into. And we have to be mindful how we use it, you know. Uh, I still like my literal Bible because some of you nasty, some of you use this as a Bible, then some of you use this for all your other tools throughout the week. Ooh. <laughs> your phone don't know whether it be holy or unholy or are we in the club tonight? <laughs> you know, what are we doing tonight? Are we in church? <laughs> you know, we wilding out tonight. So, you know, I like still using my holy Bible. I ain't taking, I will never go to the club unless we're going to get somebody saved unless this coming in the club. 
to preach the gospel. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a minute. Some of you just have all kind of stuff. It's not sacred. Because you have all kind of ungodly conversations on, on, on the phone with it, and, and you want to still use it as a Bible, and, and you know what I mean? Then you want to use it when you want to watch the game. To my pastor, I'm watching you. I'm reading the scripture when you're watching the game while I'm trying to preach. <laughs> I know y'all don't do that. Sunday mornings. And, you you know, you hold up at your Bible. This is my Bible. You do the confessions. About halftime, 1 o'clock, you still in church, you're down looking at the game, checking the scores, see what's going on. Hit people up in church. Girl, Pastor, no, you need to let us out of church. Okay, don't worry about it. I know y'all don't do that here. Y'all respect your man of God. You love him. Romans one seventeen. Yes. All right. Romans one seventeen is good now. This is really, really good. I know y'all have heard it before. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. It's good to see y'all pastors. I'm, my, my folk here, I love y'all, man. It's good to see y'all. It's good. Y'all blinged out. Y'all always looking good. Y'all always looking good. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm, I'm trying to step my stuff up this year. All right. You there, 117? Come up, say, I have it. Say, I have it. You have it, say, I have it. Okay, so it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, what, shall live, what, by faith. Now, look up, everybody. It says the just shall live. This is how we roll. And, and I want you to really pay attention to this because many times what we think how we live in, uh, we think we live by our bank account. This is what the, this is what the crazy is about things in life. Things will be a, things will be uh, somewhat as you deem them to be necessarily important to your eyes as you look on them as the importance of your eyes. But the Bible, we have to really go with the Bible and not go with what we sense and what we think and what we've been taught and what we've been told. The Bible says if you're the just, then you you live by faith. You never live by what's in your account. I don't care how it's big or small because time, it can be big, it can be small, and times it will it'll oscillate. <laughs> you know, you be like, you tell people happy because they got a whole bunch of money come to the doors of church. They happy, got stuff going well, and you tell when they're not doing well, and you almost go right back to what's in that account. We can't let our accounts, even numbers, do that to us. You know what I mean? We can't let the, the oscillating of a bank account get us sad, and now we're on a high, and you know, income tax time, people are happy, and then by June they all sad. They take a little vacation. By by September out, they're all sad, and Christmas, November, we ready, you know. You know, all kind of crazy. Our emotions go through this roller coaster stuff. But, but the Bible says the just shall live by faith. That's how we roll. Come on, say that's how we roll. So I'm not paying attention to my bank account. I thank God that he's going to fill it this year to overflow all of us. Amen. We're going to have more money than we know what to do with this year. Amen. He's going to do that for us because he knows we have kingdom things in our mind to do. We want to get people saved. Invite them to church. Hey, I want to invite you to church. I'll pay you $20. It's a, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good system. <laughs> You'll be amazed how many people come to church. I need you to come sit with me for, for the whole time, and I'll pay you $20, and then afterwards you can go and do what you got to do. But you come, oh, it's amazing. Some people do it for $10. <laughs> Ten, I go for 10 Give me $10. I come to church, you know what I mean? And hear the word, oh, I get $10 at the church. Yep, come sit right by my church on the side. You got to be in church. I'll pay you 10 It's amazing what you can use for money, how you can utilize money to your advancement. Amen? But the just, say we roll by faith. All right, so the just shall live by faith. So let's go to Romans 14, 23. Let's stay over here in Romans, all right? Let me show you this. So that's how we roll it. We roll it by faith. We're not rolling by our bank accounts. We're not rolling by how we feel. The just shall live by faith. If the just don't live by faith, the just just won't live. All right, where we at? Romans 14. Come on, let's go over there really quick. I want to give you some references. So you said Bishop didn't give us no scripture tonight. He up here talking all this stuff to give us no word. All right, so Romans 14, right, and verse number 23. Are you there? Is there Romans 14, 23? Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, let's read verse number 23. Ready, read. Whatsoever is not of faith is what? So whatsoever is not of faith is is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Let's go to another verse. Let's go to another verse. Don't, come on, let's go to Hebrews 11. So whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Ooh. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Mm. Come on, say Selah. We'll give it to you. I'm going to break it down. Come on, Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Let's go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hebrews 11 and verse number 6. Oh, this is good. All right. 
I'm going to show you something with this. <laughs> Verse number six. Are you there? Ready to read. Come on, y'all. Ready to read. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Come on, say please him. Please Come on, say it again. All right. So, so without faith, it is impossible to please him. All right. Ready to read. For he that cometh to God must believe. Watch this. Stop reviewing it. So before you watch this, look up, everybody. Look up. Now I got to give you some stuff to help you in here. I'm going to rush and be sloppy with it. Before you get to him with your petition or whatever you're tripping on, you have to already in your heart be believing. Amen. You don't get to him and ask him to help you. You believe before you approach him. This is a part of pleasing him. Like he said, oh, you really got that thing on you. Oh, you got the thing behind the thing behind the thing. You really, you really trust that I'm going to do this. Oh, yes, sir, Lord. I believe when I step to you to ask you that you're going to pull it off. So you, I want, this is powerful. Let's go back to the verse. Where are we at? 14, right? Six, I'm sorry. Four, six. But without faith, it's possible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Right? And, and we heard preachers say, he is whatever you need him to be. That's true. Right? That he is what? A rewarder. Come on, y'all. Let's read. Come on, y'all. Come on, say it out loud. Let's, let's go back. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe, come on, out loud, that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek him, seek him, seek him, seek him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33, right? Uh, in the word seek is the word what? Seek. In the word seek is seek. When you seek him, you see things from his perspective. You, you appear like it. When you seek him, you can see things from his perspective. And the Bible says, uh, Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right to a man. And that same word seem has the word see in it. So see, you're going to be on seek mode or seem mode. Seek mode or seem mode. There's a way that seemeth right, seemeth. Oh, I chose this. I chose this. I went to this college. I went to this. I picked this person or I picked this man or I picked this woman. It felt so right. It seemed right. But you were wrong because you wasn't in what? Seek mode. The only thing that can separate seek and seem is almost like the Bible talking about the, 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 the Bible is a double, the, the word is a double-edged sword, and it separates the soul and the spirit. And you have that, that word separate what's soul and what's spirit. What's wrong and what's right. What's the will of God for you and what's not. But if you're not in the word, you're going to think everything, you're going to be flowing in the same mode. And you're going to make a lot of decisions in your life on semen. And the word semen, two words, you saw meth. See meth, that's what it means. Semen, see meth. When people take meth, unfortunately, delusional. C S E E, right? M E T H. You see meth. You snorted it. You cooked it. Whatever. Not you, but the folk that see meth. Now I made a decision. I thought it was right, but he said there's a way that see meth right. And the ways it said then it opened up the ways. It's not just one way. It will open up ways to your destruction. Not just a way because you didn't seek God. You didn't, you didn't take time to get into the word. You had time. Come on, y'all. Can I get a amen on that? Let's go back. I want to play with one thing real quick because I know our time is moving, so I want to pl not play with one. I want to show you something really quick uh, that the Lord uh, uh, dealt me about now, and I don't want you to get mad with it. I just want to show you this because it will bless you. Let's go back to this verse, same verse. I want to play with this. Look at verse 6 again. It says, without faith it is impossible to please him. Without faith it is impossible what? To please him. Please him. Look at the word please. Without faith it is impossible to please him. Now, in the word please is the word least. Some of you have your ears leased to the wrong mechanism. And you'll never be able to please God. Because you'll be in that semen mode because you've leased yourself out to other things that were not like God. Your ears especially. Now I must say this and I don't mean no harm with this stuff I'm about to share with you now. I, 
I, I I enjoy technology. I love Twitter. I love all the things like you do Facebook and the, you know uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, TikTok with us, all those things like that, right? They're modern day, um, if you will. Um, uh, you know, you heard about the uh, metaverse and stuff like that. I don't want to call them modern day pimps, but they are using some of us tremendously. And we allow these medium mediums to use us tremendously. And what they're actually doing is leasing your ears out. The only person who have your whole body leased out, and your ears especially, is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some of you have leased your life out to these mediums, and the only thing that matters is what they say. And you can't have no faith in this life based on what everybody else says. There's only one way faith comes. But you've leased yourself out. And you ain't gonna have no ease. And the word please is ease. You don't have you got, life is not gonna be easy for you. When you're not targeting to please God, and you have everything else leasing you out, radio, TV, come on, our favorite shows, and you know having these folks ain't thinking about God. I ain't mad at you, but you have to again be intentional. See, I need my faith to grow. I need I need to get my promises. All the promises of God are received by faith. Y'all know that. Y'all been taught that here. All the promises of God are received by faith. And so I got to say, if I'm going to get faith, then faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word. We know that. We know that, right? That's simple, uh, basic biblical stuff. Faith coming by hearing and hearing and hearing the word. But these other things have got me so leased out, I can't hear what God got to say. Amen. So now my whole faith is messed up, and I have trust issues. I don't have no confidence in God because I don't know what's going on in my life anymore. I don't trust, and that's what basically what faith means. Uh, you know, one of the words for trust is, uh, one word for faith is trust. And the Lord told me last night, I was a study man of God, he said, some of my pro the problem with the body of Christ right now, they don't trust me. They trust everything else, social media, Facebook, Twitter. And y'all remember when, when, when Facebook went out, folk lost their minds for that one day. <laughs> y'all remember folk, folk but oh God, Cal gonna take me away. I mean, you know what I'm saying? This is crazy. Folk lost their minds. Y'all remember that day? What? That was one. I mean, that was like, you know, they're blowing up when they finally got back up. That was the biggest thing that day going on. When Facebook went down for that one day, folk lost their minds as like God left the universe. But we showed everybody what was our modern day God. See, when your God walks away, you, you don't have no hope. And that's what we did that day. We lost it. Because Facebook, I, I go in and see what everybody's saying. I ain't, I'm up. Use it in moderation. You know what I mean? You got to understand where, where your cutoff point is at. Like they got a girl on TikTok, right? I used to be on TikTok and I had to get off. Hold on the story. <laughs> had some scary stuff going on. And um, so I had to get off God. Dealt me, and, and you know what, people, God, I promise you, I lived three months, but I've been on Facebook and TikTok, and it felt so refreshing. Because the devil had me believing that I had to have it. Like I had to be on there. Like, you know, uh, 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 you know, what are your followers going to say? And, what, and then God had to deal with me and say, son, you know, if you think about this, I want you to understand this, son. He said, your life is going to be easy, easy, at ease until, you do, until I do what he wants me to do. You're concerned about followers. He said, in, in the natural term, if somebody following you in your car right now, right? You go on and you realize somebody following you. And that's kind of scary, right? Because somebody's following me. It's creepy, right? You go home, you see the same car. It's creepy. He said, creeps follow people. Is this on? 10 out of 8, 7, 6, 5. Is this on? Testing 1, 2, mic check. He said, creeps follow people. But you worry about how many followers you got. Instead of following me. You worry about how many followers. Let me see how many followers I got now. Like, creeps follow people, son. You know that. Somebody following you is, is creepy. You will call the police. You will get somebody involved. Oh, no, but you, you just don't let the world just follow. You know, you want everybody following you. Creeps follow people. I know you're not a creep. I know we follow people. I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying. <laughs> you're a good person. Praise God. You're God's child. You're God's woman. Praise God. And his man. But for the normal, natural, and when you think about it, it's the creepy people that follow folk. And they just want to follow you to see, you know, just for whatever creepy reason, they want to follow you. Okay. 
I say, go on, Reb. <laughs> All right, let, let me leave that alone. Let me keep moving because we got we to gotta continue. <sighs> okay, okay. So um, let me give you this Proverbs for us. Go over here real quick. We can kind of start winding it down just a little bit. It's so much, you know, of course, the pastors give, they have a plethora of information. But in the word, please don't just understand that please part is critical. We got to please the Lord. And please, we really have to give him my ear. We really have to give him my ear. Nothing else can be more important than making sure God has our ear. By, by default, just like, you know, you be at work, listen to a song. You, you don't even think about that song. You want to put your mind on something and you find your feet tapping. I mean, just by default, singing the song, don't you know, just by default, just, but you have to be even environments, certain environments, intentional environments this year we have to not be in. I'm not going to be in, in environments that's not godly, that's not going to promote my faith to grow. Amen. I'm not going to listen to songs on the radio that's not going to promote my faith to grow. I'm not going to look at shows on television. I have to be intentional because I'm after my blessings. And my, the only way I'm going to get is by faith. That's what the Bible says. All the promises, all the promises of God are received by your faith. You know, you've heard the term, you got little faith, right? You got little faith, uh, and then you got uh, no faith, little faith, and great faith. You know, and your faith grows based upon the amount of word that's getting in you. You got it? How, how often do you read the Bible? Let's talk about that. Do you have a Bible or reading plan for this year? Or do you just read when pastor comes up here on Sunday mornings to read the scripture with you? How often, how hungry are you? Are you have a plan where I'm checking off every day, I'm reading about five scriptures a day. There's a Bible reading plan from January to December. I got to get through this, let them play out loud. The, your phone is wonderful for that. You got Bible apps, you can play it, and that thing just plays out loud, and you can get it in your right, and just let it, let it feed your spirit. But, but again, that's the way my faith is going to grow. And then I'm not going to accomplish what God has for me to accomplish if I have no faith. And then I fall into the to the to that to this degree if i have no faith that i'm not pleasing him he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him those that are intentionally trying to seek him not those that are trying to intentionally give him excuses well lord i'm gonna come home and my favorite pjs he cared nothing about that i'm gonna put my favorite pjs on lord i'm gonna put three candles out there's the smell that you like frankincense myrrh and whatever I'm Lord, I'm going to let the atmosphere be right. I'm going to take a shower and just relax in your presence. I'm going to have water. I'm going to have me some bubbly, not wine. I'm not drinking. I'm going to have that bubbly, non-alcoholic drink to the side. And we're just going to spend some time together, Jesus. How many of you know that never happens? <laughs> the way you planned it to happen. The devil will come and, and mess up your whole day. Come on. Give you some extra stuff to focus on so that those PJs and that nice little romantic thing that you're going to do with Jesus never happens. So, I mean, you have to really go into your day and say, I got to take whatever business I got to get. I got to be radical about this. He got to get it. I don't care. I'm turning up. I told somebody the other day, uh, one of my guys was working at the church, and he was moving around, and his phone started ringing. He's like, ugh. And he's moving. I said, man, you, put the phone away. I said, you're going to hurt yourself. He's like, ugh. I said, does your, does your phone have an answer machine, an answering service? He said, yes. I said, put the phone away. They'll, 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 leave, they'll leave a message, and you can call them back. Your phone is, is smart like that. It says, hello, <laughs> I'm so-and-so-and-so. <laughs> oh, would you please leave your name, number? It, it, it'll catch you. You know, it ain't going nowhere. We get freaked out of these phones. Phone ringing, you diving for the crazy. I understand that crazy. Phone ringing, you know, oh, like your phone is controlling you. Every, like, come on now. Come on. We got, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know, he laughed about it, put it away. I mean, he had this big old thing. He was moving, right, about to hurt himself. His phone ringing. I'm like, Phone can ring. I'll deal with that later. I have, you know, like, come on, dude. For real? So, 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 okay, let me let it go. So, so anyway, we, we live in a, uh, we live in a anti-God world system, y'all. All right? We're, we're certain, we're certain that the devil, again, is, is on overtime trying to, again, uh, uh, steal uh, God's precious people uh, to go to, to, to go to Hades with him. All right, so this is what I want to give you right, real quick. Let's go to Proverbs 4. Let's go there real quick, and I'm, I'm going to be kind of wrapping it down for real. Let, let me know what time I, I'm, 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 What time is it. I remember when I got up. It's 8.30. Okay. So Proverbs 4, let's go over here. I'm going to show you something really quick. <clears throat> Proverbs 4, and I want you to do verse 20. All right? I want us to become radical this year. Intentional faith. Intentional focus. If the show's not going to give me word, I'm going to make some decisions. 
I either fill myself with God or I'm filling myself with something that's ain't gonna help me. That's just call it what it is. That's it. Call it what it is. I know it's, that's why that's why it takes us so long to get stuff. Because at the same time, you know, you know what your faith is used for? Can, can, we, can, can we be carnal and spiritual at the same time? You, you need to say amen or whatever. Help me. Okay. Your faith in this earth, you won't need it in heaven. Your faith in this earth, the Bible says, faith is the uh, substance of all, faith is the substance. Let's go over there. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. Paul's 4.20.22. Let, let me show you what your faith is used for. I want to mess it up. Hebrews 11.1. Faith, substance, things, hope, the evidence. Let's go over. Let's go over. Let's make sure I get it right. Uh, and my mind is going so fast. Let's go over to Hebrews 11 and 1. And I'm going to show you this. All right. You ready? You there? All right. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith. Say now. Faith. All right. Now faith is the substance, what? Of things. Put up emphasis. Say things. Hope for the evidence of things, what? Not seen. All right. So, so the whole essence of your faith in the earth. Right? And God gave me this definition. He's told me years ago. He said, faith is a supernatural, he is a supernatural tool given to the believer to tap into the supernatural power of God that yields manifestations in the earth. All right? So this faith, what we call faith, is literally given to you and I because we're all given not, uh, not a measure. I think we're given the measure of faith. Right? So he's not giving one more than the other. We all get to work on how, 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 how that faith grows, right? He's not, he's not discriminating, praise God, for being a beautiful God like that. Everybody gets an equal shot at it, right? But then he says this. <clears throat> he says here in the scripture now, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. I'm hoping for some things. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. So the essence of your faith, watch this, everybody. Look up real quick at, at me. The essence of your faith is to bring things to you. Amen. Things. Soap, water, car, money. Things. Clothes. Jewelry. Things. Whatever you, whatever things you tripping on. And that's why you need to get in my thing business because I ain't trying to get in your thing business because all our things are different. We need different things based on the assignment that God has for us. Yes. Things. That's what it's for. My faith is to draw things to my life. Amen. And some of you get so religious about this stuff, so you don't need some things. You need to bathe. Come on, you need soap and water is a thing. Yes. Glory be to God. <laughs> and folk gonna know if you didn't use those things when you sit by them. Praise God. So don't, let's not get deep. You know, let's not get, I don't need no thing. I just want to worship the Lord. No, you don't need that. And you might need some deodorant to throw up under the arm pits. Come on, because they're going to stick every now and then. In Jesus' name. It is the way it is, the way the human body works. If you move around for two or three days, you need a bath. Come on, you need to soak it. <laughs> Cal God to do more than take some of us away. I'm just saying. So, but my point is this. It, it's things. It's just things. God wants to have. He wants to have water. Come on, running water, clean water to drink. He wants to have food, things to eat, to nourish our bodies. He wants to have a nice driving vehicle where it's not on, on the side of the road and you're trying to get to church and you can't because the, the vehicle's not working properly. Come on now. He wants to take a trip, a trip somewhere nice every now and then. Once a year, seven days, go somewhere nice, you and your family. A thing, a vacation trip. God ain't tripping on it. He wants you to. He's given us all things to enjoy. Let's deal with that. Because some people like this get so religious. Like, I don't need. No, you need it. It's okay. It's okay. He made the things. You know, I want me some beef ribs every now and then. I love beef ribs. Praise God. You know, I like the pork too, but they don't like me. So I have to leave it alone. You know, I, you know, I, I don't, I like Mr. Pork, but he don't like me. <laughs> he just don't like me. He just do something to my blood. He just run my blood up. So I have to leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> he, I lick him, he want to kick me. I, I don't like that. That's not fair. <laughs> so I have to leave him alone. You know, every now and then I might get a little piece of bacon and everything, but you know what I'm saying? I like things. I like eating. I like food, obviously. And I'm trying to get, you know, get myself together. Praise God, I'm looking for my queen. Yeah. Looking to get married. I got to get this slim body back. I got to get this marine body back like I once had, bro. I'm just saying. It's there, praise God. I got to leave them things alone. <laughs> I can't eat them things at 11 and 10 and 11 o'clock at night anymore. I can't be eating meals. Come on. Looking at the ceilings and stuff. You eating. <laughs> 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, you know. All right. So I can't do that. I can't be doing that kind of stuff. If you're trying to, you know, I'm in the gym doing my thing. You know, back on track. And we're on a fast right now, right? Our fast ends, what, Sunday? 
you know, and I'm going to take it another 21 days. Praise God, I'm going another 21 days. And people say, Bishop, you go on in the name of the Lord, I'm eating. <laughs> You're your own man of God. I appreciate it. I done gave you my 21, Bishop. But, but some other warriors, we going on. We said, we going on in the name of the Lord. You said, you go on with the mother ones in the name of the Lord. I'm eating. <laughs> Saturday at 12.01, I'm eating, Bishop. That's fine. Come on, say, I need some things. So that's the purpose of your faith. Now, the beautiful thing, when you get to heaven, you're going to have all the things you need. That's just another, but watch this, though. But that's beautiful, right, uh, uh, Pastor Tyrell? And the other thing is, that's, guess what? And he wants us, even on earth, to have all the things we need. Yeah, he wants us to have all the things we need down here, too, because he blessed you, right, with, through faith to bring things to you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. He wants you to have enough things so you can be a blessing, what, to somebody else. I have more than three or four, five pair of shoes so I can bless somebody else. Come on, that's the whole overflow of what God wants to do, overflow in your life. Your faith is bringing you so many things, you don't have enough to store it. Come on. I mean, he, you got so much, you got to give it away. Come on now. And I'm not talking about giving old junk. I'm talking about giving nice stuff with tags on it. Blessing folk with brand new car because you got three or four of them and you can't drive all of them. I'm just saying. That's the purpose of your faith, man, just to be a blessing to somebody else. God, you know, the Abrahamic thing right there at Genesis 12, 1, that he says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Lord, how the bullshit. I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing. And you can't be a blessing if you're not blessed. That's what you're faithful, drawing things so much that you can begin to become a distribution center. This blessing folk. As I speak to you, Pastor, we got to go on a fast. Why? Because we got so many things. We got to see who God wants us to bless next. And your issue is not money anymore. It's not you don't have enough. The water holes always get full first before it starts to dis, dis spread on everybody else. You're always going to be loaded with blessings if we do it God's way. You getting up every day intentionally reading the word, intentionally cut back on some of the shows, your favorite shows is giving God this consecrated time. I'm going to get more word in during that time. You know what I mean? I'm going to pick up my Bible and let, this, let the, the scripture read a little bit more. I'm going to block some things that I know that's not healthy for my spirit. Because you will become a product of your environment. Your environment will change you before you change it. And some of the women we see in our day, some beautiful women and men act just like them folk on TV. I mean, you see people at behavior. You watch stuff and you become it. What you look upon, you become it. I mean, I'm really serious about it. You have to be mindful of what you keep watching and looking at. And you start sounding like what you look at, what you spend time with. You start looking and sounding like it. Proverbs 4.20. We're almost done. Can we get a hallelujah? hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Yeah, we got we to get serious about our relationship with God. Give me no more plan. This is, this plan time is behind. You know, it's like we, we like Heinz and we need to catch up. <laughs> we, we like Heinz and we need to catch up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ain't no more plan. Any time I have a plan. All right, Proverbs 4, 20, 22, you there? Verse 20, let's hurry up. I don't want to belabor the time. Verse 20 says this. It says, my son, attend to my what? Words. Attend to my what? Word. word. Here, here's, here's faith coming by hearing and hearing by what? The word. So, so here's, let. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, verse 2, boom, 20. I got to get my eyes back up here. Boom, there it is. My son, attend to my words, incline, what, thine ear unto my saying. Do you see that? Right? And then it says here, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them, the midst of thine, uh, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are thy life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. See that? Keep the heart with all diligence. For out of it, what? For out of it are the issues of life. Now, number one, I want you to write this down. Attend. Attend. A-T-T-E-N-D. I want you to start attending. That, that means I must give undivided, consecrated consecrated attention to God's word as I read them. I got to attend. I got to make an effort to get into the word. Why? Because I'm, 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 an, I'm, I'm focused on intentional faith. I want my faith to grow. I got stuff I have to achieve. And it may take more faith than what I have right now to possess it. Got it? If it's requiring five levels of faith, I'm on two. Obviously, I need some more. Faith come by hearing what? Hearing by the word. Y'all know that. That's how my faith grows. All right? So I'm a, I'm a 10. Number one. Number two. I'm going to incline my ear, <clears throat> all right? Inclining your ear would indicate a humble, teachable attitude. I must lay aside prejudice, preconceptions, and receive with an open mind what God is saying to me. 
I got to lend my ear, lease my ear to the word. My ear cannot be leased to things that are not going to promote it to, to, to build faith. That's the truth. I mean, some of you still look at the secular states, you're saved. That's, 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 I ain't mad at you, but like, when are you, when are you going to grow up? I mean, seriously, I mean, like, I enjoy, I've, I, I, I had to get delivered from music. Music was that deep in my spirit when I was younger. I had to get delivered. It wasn't sex, it wasn't all that. I wasn't doing too much crazy. I was really scared about all that. That's another story. Some people think men just want sex. I was looking out for, I don't know if I'm going to live or die, so let me just try to do the best I can out here when I was young. Yeah, come on, let's talk about it. I wasn't that hurt wild, not like a wild child, like whoever wanna, whoever wanted to have it sex with me, I'm going to have it sex with them. Nope. I'm like, Lord, there's stuff floating out here, and I'm trying to do the best I can, Jesus. <laughs> I ain't trying to die no time early. I, I'm saying I looked at myself like that because some, you know, you know, people, people, you are who you are, right? And I live in the environment, a community. It was the it was the hood, and all kind of crazy was going on. And I was just wondering, God had His hand on me at an early age, and I, I had to recognize that. That's why I didn't have the mindset because I didn't want that mindset. Like I was just scared, like nah. Ah, this ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember close calls where, you know, uh, even when I was younger, walked away from things, and, and then girls like, you must be gay because you you know I'm just, like, trying to throw myself in there. Baby, you fool, and I ain't trying to get hooked up with no fool. <laughs> you need to be trying to hold your course, too. We's not married, kissy. Kissy, we not married. We can't be doing the nasty we ain't married. And I'm like, like, wow, look at this generation. It's crazy. Like, you know, I'm like crazy stuff like that. No. And now you're trying to get me to punk out and prove myself. That got nothing to prove you. I'm holding myself and my wife. Now I did, you know, I didn't do so well, you know, as I got a little, you know, I had some bumps and scrapes. Got back on path. Come on, shout amen. Because God is a good God. He reminds you of the promises and the, and, and the stuff you, you told him that you're going to do. And thank God, you know, thank God I did. I, I got back on track and just held my course, you know, as best I could, you know. I'm not saying I'm not perfect, you know. I, I, I was out there, you know, you know, more than I wanted to be out there at some points where you just got distracted. I got distracted because, and my pressures came from, this is the crazy part, my pressures came from people like some of the girls I was dating. I'm, some, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be entangled. That's the new word we learned. But I'm not trying to be entangled. I didn't say that there because I didn't know that word existed back then. I ain't trying to get messed up. I mean, because I like you, I don't want to necessarily want to have sex with you because I like you. Yeah, we have a platonic, a natural platonic where we just boyfriends, girlfriends kind of see, you know, this is, some people get dated, they date, they date young, then they kind of end up getting married because that's the person. Can we just hold ourselves until we get married? Some people won't do that no more. My wife been gone for four years, and I'm holding my course. And people are like, ah, man of God, you, you need to go over to Hawaii. You need to run over to Japan and take a ticket. No, you go over there. I'm staying right here in America, minding my business, holding my course. So my wife come. I ain't, I ain't playing. I'm not, this is not a play thing for me. Oh, man of God, I heard some of my family members. Oh, oh bro, God will give you a ticket to pass. No, thank you. No, you've been holding your course with your wife for 30 years. She's gone now. God at least give you a pass. I'm going to hold my course and show the, my single people that I have to preach to them and teach to them about holding a course, being single. Now, never knowing I'll be single 30 years later, but it's okay. But now, I've got to write a book about it, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't be out here teaching something and not walking it. That's all of us, because we all, by, by, by default, we're evangelists, we're Proclaiming the gospel, telling people to live right. I came out here telling people these singles, hold your course and do this. And, and I'm out here doing something in the backdrop or flying a crazy remote place that they think nobody. Wherever you fly, somebody gonna know you. <laughs> you right here, remote places around the tree, under the tree, around the corner, in this spot, and it'd be the spot and you look at somebody. No, I ain't about to do that. I love the Lord and He'll keep me. I love holiness. I want God. I don't never want God to remove his hands from me. I don't know want to get in my flesh so bad that I just need a moment. I need God every moment. The rest of his hands on me. Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I, okay, number three. Let's keep going because I got to close. Uh, number three, uh, let them not depart from thine eyes. Oh, man, there's a scripture. Uh, 
Let me see if I can grab it for you real quick. Let them not depart from that. I must keep my eyes focused on God's word. Right? That's we're still coming out of the scripture, Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. I must keep my focus on God's word. I must not allow my eyes to wander to other statements from conflicted sources, such as books, articles, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I, I got to stay focused. That TikTok thing gets so bad for me. I mean, you know, when the lady come on and say, uh huh, you've been scrolling too much. You need to get yourself off of TikTok. There's like commercial on TikTok telling you to get off because you've been there too long. And you scroll, 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 and realize you've been there an hour and a half. Like, whoa. And your fingers say, scroll some more. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to teach you a little lesson. You taught me a valuable lesson on TikTok. And boy, I, I got off of it quick. I got off of it quick. You want another lesson? That'll be next year. I'll tell you part two. <laughs> we got to hurry up for the sake of time. <laughs> I got off. Guys, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to just let enough scare come to you. And, and I got off. I said, you know what? This, this ain't even worth it. You know what I mean? When somebody's trying to get your information and blackmail you and all that, when you're trying to, you know, get to know people online and they're trying to blackmail you. I said, oh, this is how this generation rolling. Oh, yeah, Bishop. Somebody told me, says, man of God, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't really think much about yourself. You're not this kind of high-minded guy. I'm not, and I really don't think of myself like that. He said, people go online and see who you are, where you are, what you're doing, and what's going on, and all your stuff and what you got going on. I'm sure they're going to try to set you up. I said, I ain't think about that. I'm not like that. I'm not going online thinking about who people, what they do, what their living is, what they make. I, I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy for whoever. You got it? And then the potential of my time, they might blackmail you because of what? <laughs> For what? No, let me get off this TikTok. Y'all crazy over here. <laughs> Y'all wild not too much for me. Mm -mm, I don't roll like that. Mm -mm. So, ladies and gentlemen, y'all need to be careful. Uh, information you exchange online. Come on now, let's talk about it a little bit. No, don't, don't, don't be, don't be, don't be gullible. And my girls, thank God for my my daughters. Well, they be like, Dad, you need, you know, they, they teach me real quick. This, this Facebook world stuff and this meta universe world, they teach me. I'm, I'm listening to them, too. I was so crazy, like, not crazy. I was like, my daughter, this lady sent me a picture one day. And I guess the girl was trying to hit him. I'm like, gullible. I'm like, what does it mean? I said, Vinny, what does it mean? The girl was like, hit me up. She's like, like this, right? I'm like, Vinny, what do you think? She said, Dad, she's trying to tell you to call. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like, I mean, I didn't, I, I promise you, fast, I didn't know. I said, Vinny, what this lady is saying? She was like, I'm like, Vinny, what's she saying? Dad, come on, Dad. You, you, that, you that slow man? Come on, man. <laughs> come on, Dad. Come on, come on. Step your game up, son. <laughs> She's saying holla. I'm like, no, we ain't holla. <laughs> la di da we stand no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We stand focus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those things lead. This stuff leads to stuff. You meet people and stuff lead and, and this and that, you know. And I always tell my, my, my older people and younger people this, upper persuasion for a lower invasion. Excuse my French. I mean this in all sincerity of my heart. Now, I don't mean no, I would never do anything, say anything in church, right? If he don't bend the knee, don't let him bend you over. Because see, men want to bend people over at some points before they bend the knee. He need to be proposing to you. Amen. Putting the ring on your finger, getting the one to marry you before he's trying to bend you over. That's right. No ring, nothing. Amen. 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 Real talk. Amen. Can we go to the fourth one? We're gonna be, we'll, we'll kind of conclude. Right, we're at the fourth one. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. All right? So, so keep them in the midst of thine heart. All right? It's about the word now. It's about, you know, keep.
keep them in the midst of thy heart. Even with the actual words are no longer in front of my eyes. I must keep meditating on them in my heart, thus keeping them at the very source of the center of my life. All right? My faith must obtain, then it must sustain, then I must maintain. See, your faith is growing to obtain the things, right? Then it sustains it, and then you got to learn how to maintain it. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, see, see, we have faith to obtain things, but then we don't have faith to sustain it. And then we definitely don't have faith to maintain it. Most of us can't show us where some of our life blessings have gone because your faith pulled it in, but now five years later, the repo man got it. So when your faith pulls stuff in, you got to understand, I got to sustain this. I got I to keep this momentum. And then I got to maintain it. Maintain it. Got it? Because some of your faith will pull stuff in, then you realize I don't have enough faith to maintain it. You got to maintain relationships. Come on, y'all. You can't just get a wife and just want to treat any kind of way. You can't, can't just get friendships and not maintain it. It's going to take maintenance. Cars take maintenance. Oil change, filters, or you know, tires. And some of you, that stuff expensive. You know, nothing wrong with Mercedes, nothing wrong with nicer cars, high-end cars, but you, know, you got to learn how to maintain them. Amen. If you get it, you got it. Nothing wrong with a big house, right? Nice house. You got to know that they got three or four units. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got our church, and uh, we was raising money for the church years ago. We were getting ready to buy the Piggly Wiggly. And then people told us how many ACs we needed, 16 of them. <laughs> boy, I tell you what, boy, I was like, Lord, look at this here. Is this something here? <laughs> yeah, so this big yes, uh, Piggly Wiggly going to need about 16 units to run it. S sir, I, sir, you said what now? <laughs> sir, 16 big ones. And maybe some small ones, maybe in your office or some of the smaller classrooms. Well, sir, how much is that going to be? Well, it's going to run about forty dollars to $50,000. I said, Lord, we should have left this Piggly Wiggly where it was at. <laughs> we should have left the Piggly Wiggly Wiggling. <laughs> that was just one perspective, says ACs. We are talking about sheetrock. We are talking about electrical. You know, it took faith to build this thing. Thank God we paid in full right now. The whole building's, whole campus paid in full right now. It took faith to do it, but we, we got it done. So 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 anyway, uh, that that was that. But we 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 over the years we 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 allow God to 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 do that. Okay, can I can I conclude? Cause I gotta I gotta uh, wrap up here. Okay, how can I wrap up and leave you happy? I don't leave you mad. <laughs> I want to leave you happy. Okay, so now this is what we're gonna do in, in closing, cause I gotta close. I got so much more to say, but I'll come back. I promise, Pastor. I pray he'll let me come back and and and, and talk to you later. Um, this wants you to realize here. Let's go to back to Hebrews 11 and 1. And I'll wrap up with this. <clears throat> Hebrews 11 and 1. All right? Is that food I smell? Because I ain't trying to be carnal, but it's like, Lord, something going on. <laughs> I'm trying to stay focused. Like, Jesus, something not good here. <laughs> Is it me, Jesus? I know I put on some cologne, but I don't smell like no cologne. I smell like food. <laughs> and that's how it happened. Like we were on the fast food that doing is this. Dancing. Dancing your nose. Like, wow. <sighs> okay, so here we go. Hebrews 11 and 1. I'm back. Okay, so now check this out. This is powerful, right? This is real good. Let's go back to, <clears throat> let's go back to uh, verse 1. You there? All right. So let's read out loud. Re let's read one. I'm, I promise one time out loud, and I'm, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to just break this thing down for you. Ready, go. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. Now look up. One of the powerful things about faith, now, get, of course, you know, I'm, I'm sure your pastor have shared with you about other scripture references, you know, um, uh, uh, faith, uh, that faith is, uh, let me back up, how faith is obtained through, through the word, right? Uh, that we obtain faith through reading the word. Now, faith comes by hearing. Y'all know that, right? Y'all already know that reference. I don't want to bore you with that. But here, here it is, a very powerful scripture here, 11 and 1. If I don't have a now faith. Say now. No, notice how it starts off. Now. Say now. 
All right, so, so two things are going to happen to the believer. You're either going to operate now or no. For, for you, it's either now or no. But you can only walk in now if you have faith. That's why uh, the scripture says now, it, it starts off with that, says other verbiage, but check this out. If I, if I don't have a now faith, then I'm probably operating in a no faith, Right? And when you move in a now faith, your victory has already been declared and won. When I turn the word, I'm moving in the now. If you flip the whole word, it's spelled W-O-N. All I do is win. All you do is win. Number one, go get your blessings. Yeah. yeah. Go get your house. Yeah. There you go. Go get your job. Yeah. Go get your car. Yeah. Go get your marriage. Yeah. Go get your wealth. Yeah. Go get your career. Yeah. Go get your promotion. Yeah. Go get your health. Yeah. Go get all that God has for you. Yeah. And that's what the believer does when he's walking in extreme faith. You'll never get a no because the Bible says, this is powerful, all the blessings of the Lord are yes and amen. He doesn't have a no to give you because he trusts that you're going to walk in the now faith. You're going to walk and hear the word. You're going to take time to be intentional to get the word in you. He knows every day when you get up because you told him you love him, you're going to spend time with him. He knows you're going to block some of those TV shows and get more of the word in you. He knows you're going to listen to some of the uh, Christian programming, and we, we push that stuff down, but we need to listen to more godly stuff that's going to empower, impact our faith to grow. He knows that, so he already gives you a yes. Right? He gives you a yes. Now watch this. I'm going to close with this. And the only reason he gives you a yes because you already see your end at the beginning, right? Like he sees it because that's what happened with our eyes. That's why you got to be careful also what you lay your eyes on. Say eyes. In the word eyes, let's spell it E-Y-E-S. You should always give God a yes through your eyes no matter what the circumstances look like. Are you well able to occupy? Yes, Lord. Do you believe what I said? Yes, Lord. Because I'm not looking at with my natural eyes to determine whether I'm going to have what God said I'm going to have. That's what the, 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 the folk did, right, in the Old, Old Testament. They looked at it, they got moved, they got scared. God told them, go and occupy. Yes, go possess the land. The grapes, all that belongs to you. They looked at the giants, got moved by what they saw. Instead of giving God a yes, they gave him a no. They sang that song, no, 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 we can't do it, God, no. That's what they sang to God. <laughs> but we should be saying what? Yes, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes, yes to your will, God. We should be saying that because our eyes and faith don't agree. We walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, stand to you if you give God a biggest hand clap ever. We walk by faith. Come on, say we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm never moved. Come on, say it out loud. I'm never moved by what it looks like. I'm never moved by what it looks like. I operate in a now faith. Father, I thank you that my eyes are anointed to see it the way you see it. I'm always in a seeketh mode and not a seen mode. I see things from your perspective. I walk in now. I will never allow the enemy to trick my life and to hijack my faith from this day forward. In Jesus' name, come on, shout amen. Shout amen.
Shout amen, amen, amen. Now we have, we have, I have a whole lot of pastors get me come back. I'm just being mindful of the time is 907. I don't know uh, if y'all have done the offering. I want to make sure that we, uh, he didn't tell me to do this, but I want to make sure we receive an offering tonight. Amen. I came, I came to sow tonight. Uh, to be a blessing to the man of God. So I want us to uh, just, 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 just get a gift on, in your hands. I don't know what the Spirit of God is dealing with you about, about sowing tonight. Sowing is the will of God. Sowing is the will of God. I want us to learn also. I know you guys are sowers and givers here. Always be that. Don't, don't ever let the devil punk you. The Lord's going to bless you all this year with resources and monies. And don't ever be punked out by money. It is a tool of exchange and change, change and exchange. But I want you all to understand, man, more from what you're about to do tonight is coming and route to the believer. I believe God's going to raise up millionaires in this house, Pastor. I believe, there's, I believe there's people that have ideas in their bellies. And I believe there's people that have uh, uh, geniuses of ideas that's going to cause millions to come into their life. And they're going to be very committed uh, to being one of the paymasters. I don't know if y'all heard the term paymasters. All right. I believe there's going to be some paymasters in this house that God wants to raise up. Because the house of the Lord needs it. There's times when the pastor have more vision than money, but this house will have more money than vision or equal the same. Or the vision will outwalk the money. Or the money will outwalk the vision. And you have to catch up and come up with even creative things that God will deal with you about in prayer uh, through intercession for the church to do because you'll be that blessed. The church will be that collectively blessed. Amen. But I want you all to get it drawn for now. And uh, just whatever God's laid upon your heart, we need to be a blessing. So a seed tonight of gratitude, of thankfulness, amen, for what God is going to do in your, your life of 2023, amen. I, I'm, I'm grateful tonight. Came willing.